Welcome to Living Life. Our attention spans uh, as a whole have diminished greatly these days. You know, videos have replaced reading, and even that we think is too long. So instead of long form videos, uh, we watch shorts, right? We want to get to the point right away. And what the world considers important just constantly changes rapidly. And we find ourselves just chasing after all of that, chasing after the new thing, chasing after the new trend, the hot topic, and our heads are on a swivel, just trying to just follow along with all of it. But today's psalm, it tells us to stop doing that, relax. And it reveals the folly, uh, the not what eyes, right? Not being wise and doing all of that. And true wisdom is not found in chasing after the things of this world or even trusting in yourself. That's foolishness as well. Instead, true wisdom can only be found in walking and following God. Uh, so with that, uh, let's try to figure out what true wisdom is, and let's read today's passage together. Psalm 49, verses 13 to 20. This is the fate of those who trust in themselves and of their followers who approve their sayings. They are like sheep and are destined to die. Death will be their shepherd, but the upright will prevail over them in the morning. Their forms will decay in the grave far from their princely mansions. But God will redeem me from the realm of the dead. He will surely take me to himself. Do not be overawed when others grow rich, when the splendor of their houses increases. For they will take nothing with them when they die. Their splendor will not descend with them. Though while they live, they count themselves blessed, and people praise you when you prosper. They will join those who have gone before them, who will never again see the light of life. People who have wealth but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Today, we get to the second half of Psalm chapter 49, and it begins by saying this. Uh, this is the fate of those who trust in themselves and of their followers who approve their sayings. They are like sheep and destined to die, and death will be their shepherd. You know, there are a lot of different words in the Bible for sin. There are a lot of different nuances. Uh, but ultimately, what we see in Scripture is that sin is when you place uh, your trust in only yourself that you believe and you declare that you are in control of everything, even your own salvation. And if that's who you are, the psalmist tells us today that it can only lead to death. Uh, you are like sheep, and death will be your shepherd. It's a very scary image that the psalmist provides. You know, when we say that someone lives just for themselves, we think of them being very selfish, right? Uh, we think of them doing whatever they want, right? Whatever they want, whenever they want. And that's true. Uh, but it doesn't only refer to those who might have no faith. It could also refer to those who think that they're doing the right thing all the time. And that because they are doing the quote-unquote right thing and following all the rules and being a good person, uh, that they're setting the standard for what is good and right. And if they're doing that, that's actually the same thing. That's living for yourself. That's sin. That's also a path to death like the psalmist talks about. Uh, especially during this Lenten season, uh, we should be reminded that that is not the way. And instead, there's only one way. It's not through us, the one way. His name is Jesus Christ. We must remember that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And only through Him can we ever see the Father, meet the Father, know the Father. It's only by His grace, by what He has given unto us through His cross, can we be saved. Uh, so today, let's not place our trust in ourselves and even in our own thoughts. Instead, no matter how talented you may be or no matter what great job you are or no matter if others praise you, uh, let's let go of all of that. And instead, whatever situation that you find yourself in, let us remember that hope does not come in placing faith in ourselves, but hope comes in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you have placed any amount of trust, too much trust, if you are the one that's setting the standard for what is good and right in your life, uh, let's let go of all of that. Let's repent. Uh, this Lenten season is the perfect time for that. And instead, let's place all of our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. 
Uh, but it's not only for those who place their trust in themselves that the psalmist talks about. It's also for those who care too much about the world and wants to follow in the ways of the world and only does what the world considers important. You know, if someone is famous, if someone is rich or successful, uh, we nav naturally gravitate towards them. And thinking that what they say is important, that for some reason, because they have the success in this world, that everything they do is right. Uh, but in this world, there are too many voices. Uh, there are too many, you know, personal truths that permeate through all what's going on around us. And it could be very, very, very distracting and confusing. You know, YouTube, Instagram, movies, music, streamers, it's never ending, right? And we look at all the stuff that they're trying to show us, and many times we want that, right? We think that's what is good. Uh, it could be very alluring, it could be very shiny. And yet what we need to understand is that none of that, none of that is real. It's all fake. And it's very dangerous to be able to place our trust and want what they are flaunting. If the world says it's important and we try to just want that, uh, in a way we lose not only ourselves, but we lose our faith in God. If the glamour of the world, thinking if I only had that, then I would be whole. If only I have what that person is showing, then I will be happy. That's a very dangerous thing of thinking that we have. The psalmist reminds us today in verse 16, uh, do not be overawed by when others grow rich, when the splendors of their houses increase, for they will take nothing with them when they die. Their splendor will not descend with them. You must remember that everything in this world is fleeting. It's going to be gone. It's like air, right? Uh, instead, let us be able to focus all that we are, our hopes, our trust, our beliefs, what we want, our desires, everything. Let's be able to place all of that on Jesus. You know, if we're falling into the traps of trusting in ourselves, if we're falling into the traps of wanting what the world wants, I pray that we are able to just let go of all of that. Let us repent, turn back to God, surrender all that we are to Him. Stop trusting in yourself, Stop trusting and wanting what the world wants and let us be able to fix our eyes on Jesus and allow him to be our good shepherd and allow him to give us real, true, everlasting life. Uh, Lent, right? It began about a month ago ago for us. Uh, for those who don't know what Lent is, it's the 40-day period before Easter. And it begins on Ash Wednesday, February 14th, not too long ago. And we're reminded on Ash Wednesday that from dust we come and to dust that we will return. Uh, that, you know, we're just part of creation. But that doesn't mean that our lives are meaningless. If anything, we're reminded of the blessings that we have received, that life in itself is a blessing from God. And to be able to know our Savior, to be able to walk with Him daily, there is no greater blessing than that. And He is the one that provides meaning. He is the one that provides purpose. And He gives us fullness of life. So today, let's be able to recommit ourselves to Jesus. Once again, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I pray that this blessing, uh, this verse, that this will be a reminder to all of us here today uh, to be able to recommit and reconnect with Jesus Christ. Uh, not only in this season, but every day as well. Let's all pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you so very much for giving us this message, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that if there are times in our lives when we have trusted too much in ourselves or wanted the things of this world, we pray that we are able to let go of that heart. Instead, Lord, let us be able to surrender ourselves to you. And remember, Lord, that you are the only way and you are the one that gives true life unto us. So we pray, Lord, that we will receive all of that and we will be able to let go of anything else. But we thank you once again. We love you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.